think responsible waste management is extremely important. Um, we have a real opportunity to increase awareness about recycling and about how important it is as a society. So it's really important for us to put in the correct infrastructure, to work with correct responsible suppliers such as Waste for Change to make sure that we are showing you know, a really good way of recycling properly our event waste um, and hopefully you know, inspiring people to make changes in their own behaviours um, when they leave the event. I think uh, Ian is right, I think in terms of society and the way that Waste for Change are advocating uh, responsible waste management for local Indonesian populations. Uh, it's a real, real, real opportunity, as I said, to, to make a big stamp on, on the local community and continue to make great work that we So the way that this starts is that we will work with Jack Pro, the promoter, to lay out the requirements for waste management suppliers for Formula E. So this includes elements being that the waste supplier has to be licensed, they have to make sure that they recycle, um, that they, we can dispose all of the different streams of waste that we have, which also includes hazardous waste. So we will look for a supplier that fits all of those elements, that we understand the methods of disposal as well, that we understand the local streams and the infrastructure in place, because we will then replicate that at our event to make sure that when fans come to our event, it's very familiar to them in terms of how they should be disposing of their waste. Then there's other elements such as the amount of bins we have to put on site, the different streams, the recycling range of volunteers that we put in place to make sure that we are maximising the awareness of recycling. And then post-race, it's getting understanding the amounts of the different streams that we have produced and then being able to include that within our carbon footprinting as an entire championship and then offsetting that as part of our net zero carbon strategy. So it probably takes us about six week process um, from sort of the start of the discussions to post race. Sure. So as a Formula E Championship, we have ISO 2012-1, which means that we are holistically a sustainable event. And within that, that means that we also want to work with suppliers who are like-minded and share the same sustainability values. So when we're looking at waste management, we want to find and work with a supplier that, that you know, does responsible waste management um, for our event, but also increases awareness and the uptake of the recycling, the infrastructure and the education in that host city. Because not only do we want to do responsible waste management, but we also want to leave positive lasting change and we hope that by having the event and implementing this other event and working with Waste for Change that we will hopefully inspire some people and educate and make sure that people will implement that in their own daily lives and increase the amount of that we are recycling locally in Jakarta and Indonesia. I think as well just you know the different business elements for Waste for Change you've obviously got the uh, the waste management themselves, but also the educational side of things and, and the campaigning. Um, you know, the EPRI is such a such a big event to come to Jakarta to actually see how local residents, Indonesian uh, locals as well, will be able to responsibly recycle. Um, will be will be a huge huge plus for the local area and, and will leave a lasting legacy for uh, for the next you know, years to come. So we hope that they will be able to either put it in the residue, the inorganic or the recycling streams. So as I mentioned, we have matched with the local infrastructure that they would see on the streets. So, and we have the recycling ranges to help educate and make sure that they know to put the packaging in the correct bin. 
Um, we're also, as I mentioned earlier, we're phasing out single-use plastics, so we've also put pictures on the signs to make sure that they will understand and know which streams to put their different wastes in. Uh, again, no, I think this, the biggest thing is you know, correct labelling, ensuring that the recycling ranges are, are visible, um, and obviously you come from volunteering from Waste for Change uh, and having the understanding of, of how you know, the recycling centres and the waste management centres work and, and operate uh, will be a really good opportunity for for the uh, the supporters to, to understand actually what happens after they put that um, whatever it is into the, into the correct bin and to understand that process moving forward as well. I think, I think, yeah, I think we definitely, as, as sustainability professionals, we absolutely have to practice what we preach. So there are elements like having reusable bottles or reusable coffee cups or having bamboo toothbrushes that I will implement or like shampoo bars. So I think we, I personally do make small efforts. I also don't have my own car, so I will just use public transport. So we do make lots of conscious efforts to also try and be as zero carbon footprint as possible. I don't know, Tom, you probably have some habits too yeah i think i think to be be innovative as well to keep up with local changes or global changes as well uh so whether it is the, the likes of electric the use of electric vehicles or again utilizing public transport where possible um but to come up with you know to keep on top of researching new products uh i guess calculating our own carbon footprint as well and to the best of the ability that we can uh to ensure that yeah we, we practice what we preach um, and, and to ensure that we're, we're most informed and when we do speak all around the world, we're able to, to give our best opinion and, and I guess make that continuous change against the climate change.